I thought I would start off just a little bit with the grammar. I just found these here, and I don't have enough for you. Penny, did I get one to you? You got one, okay. Uh, I didn't have enough to go around. Some of you have seen this before. It has a Greek alphabet, of course, and uh, tells you how to say the words. Over here on the, uh, on the alphabet, it has um, some words. Blepo, which means what? I see. All right. And philo means what? Friend. And nix means what? Night. And adelphos, are these familiar to you? A brother. Okay. And anthropos. Everybody knows what anthropos means because we studied it here, right here. Matter of fact, we've had quite a few of these in this le last few lessons. Anthropos is uh, mankind. Sozo, I say, and cosmos is what? World, okay, or world system, or the cosmos. Our English word cosmos right, comes right out of the universe. Echo is I have a hole to get. Uh, psyche, psyche, that means soul. And thelema, that means to will. It has the eight diphthongs down here. Okay, and uh, the vowels, the 24 letters of the Greek alphabet, and some different lessons. And then we have the uh, conjugation of the present indicative active, which is OSA, OMENETI, UTIAIN. Okay, LEGO, LEGAIS, LEGAY, LEGOMEN, LEGETI, LEGUSI, LEGAIN. On page number something. I can't even read the page number on here. I've written it up. So so much. Anyway, that's a little bit of Greek grammar. I don't go into that a whole lot, but uh, it goes in. Also, it has the uh, on page uh, 28 in this little thing. You have the different uh, uh, cases. I wanted to show you the cases: nominative, genitive, ablative, locative, instrumental, dative, accusative, and vocative. See that? And it shows you how the endings of those words are. Well, this is a second declension, okay? And this is masculine gender. That gives you a little bit of the idea. And here is how, what the cases mean. Of course, in my Greek grammar, you have all this anyway, plus the Greek term, all right? Now, let's go into 1546. All u proton to pneumaticon all to psychicon epeta to pneumaticon but not firstly the spiritual but the soulish then the spiritual what's it talking about it's talking about our first father which is who? Adam. As in Adam all die. Don't we? As in Adam all die. Because of Adam we all die. And if you're born again because of the second Adam you will all be made alive one of these days. The first Adam give us our sentence of death and the sentence of our nature our sin nature. The second Adam gives us our spiritual brotherhood, so to speak. That's when you're born again. You have brothers and sisters in Christ. You have a great big family. Great big family. Remember Brother Abe and here somebody was asking him some questions one night and he says we all have the same last name in here. We all have the same last name. Remember that, Brother Roger? That was quite a statement. We all have the same last name. In this class, we have the same last name. We're all children of God. We're all children of God. We're children of the God, of the Creator, of the heavens and the earth. Isn't that something? But not the firstly. Look at that little old proton there. 
That's a little adverb, page 355. Not first the spiritual, pneumaticon, but the natural, the soulish, the life, the basically we're animated by the Adamic, by the Adamic nature. We're animated by it. We're, we're charged, energized by the Adamic nature. Then the spiritual. Then the spiritual. The spiritual. What is the word for spirit in Hebrew? Remember what that word is? It's the same word. It means the same thing in Hebrew that it does in Greek. Remember what it is? Like that? Yeah, ruach. What does ruach mean? It means breath. It means wind. All right? The, uh, <coughs> the Jewish Publication Society kind of missed the boat real good. But in Genesis 1 and 2 it says, and they win from God, hoovered over or passed over the faces of the waters. A win from God, but really spirit God. All right? Spirit God. Numa. 1547. Ho protos, anthropos, ek geis, koikos. Ho, deuteros, anthropos, ek, uranu. The first human being out of earth, all right? That word there means ashes. That koikos, that means ashes or fine dust. Ashes are fine dust. In other words, the first Adam was dirt, like dirt. He was created from the same elements as dust and dirt. Okay? We looked at that in Hebrew. We have Adam, all right? And we have Adam. Adam, Mom. There's Earth, and there's Adam, and there is... Uh, there is blood, okay? They're all related. It's all red. All means red, okay? Edom, the name Edom. Who was called Edom in the Bible? Who was the guy called Edom? He was a red-headed stranger. Who was he? Huh? Esau. Old Red. That's what his name was, Red. Esau, Red. He had probably had red hair. Probably Rebecca or not uh, Rebecca, but Rachel. No, Rebecca. Rebecca had <coughs> red hair, most probably, from what the historical writings say. And that boy came out with red hair, too. And hair all over him, didn't he? Hairy all over. All right. The first human out of earth are the same elements as the dust, or he's, a, he's the dirt man, okay? My friend up in Canada used to call himself the dirt bag. <laughs> We're all dirt bags, aren't we? We're all related to dirt. All related to dirt, and we will go to dirt. That was prophecy in Genesis. All right? Man shall go to dirt. He was made from the same elements as the dirt, and he will go to dirt. The second, the Deuteros, the second mankind. Who's this talking about? The father of mankind there. That's Jesus, all right? Out of heaven. Out of heaven. He's the one out of heaven. Let's go to John, the third chapter, quickly. <clears throat> John chapter 3. We're having a ball in the gospel according to John on Sunday night. We'll swap that over here to this class when I get through with... First Corinthians, and we'll do Hebrew on Sunday night. John 3. John 3, Jesus is talking to whom? Who's he talking to? Who's Jesus talking to here? Nicodemus. What does Nicodemus mean? People. Nico what? People. Nicodemus. People conquerors. Nico means I conquer, and people is, de is uh, 
Demos. Nicodemus is one of the words for people. There's another word called laws, too. And Jesus answered to him and said, Truly, truly, I say to you. Now, this is quite, in, in Greek, this is beautiful. Because it's talking about you all. Okay? Who's Jesus talking to here? He's talking to Nicodemus, but he's not only talking to Nicodemus. Who else is he talking to? Huh? Nicodemus had an entourage with him when he came to Jesus. He was a representative of whom? The Pharisees and the Sanhedrin court. That's what's going on here. He said, I say to all of you Pharisees and all of you judges, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot experience it. He cannot see it. And Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again. Now, Nicodemus knew what being born again was. Now, you've been in my class for, for quite a while, some of you have. You might remember what the term being born again, did Nicodemus, should he have known what that term was? Huh? Why, Brother David? Because many times I'm sure many times Nicodemus had tutored Gentiles to become citizens of spiritual Israel and they were called proselytes okay and he told them that you must be born again that term what they would do they were born the first time to their ethnic background they are Spanish from Spain they were Greeks Whatever. Okay, Egyptians, Africans, whatever. Whatever national background they came to, that's what they were when they were born. That's their ethnic background. But they had to die to that. If they were going to become spiritual Jews, then they're going to have to die to that old ethnic background. And they had to be, they said, born again. So they would shave all their hair off like a newborn baby. I mean, Indians, we got, we were, we're born with hair. But those poor white people, you know, all of those, <laughs> they're cursed. They don't have any hair when they're born, you know. <laughs> anyway, they would shave them all off, get shave all the hair, cut their fingernails all the way back like a baby, and then they would baptize them and dip them and said they had died to their old ethnic background and they were raised anew. They were raised to a new ethnic background, and that's what's called being born again. So now Nicodemus knew that there was a spiritual essence to being born again. Okay? Truly I say to you, unless one is born again, and literally it means from up, above. Okay? He cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter in the second time into his mother's womb? And they born, can't he? And Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you all, again, you all, I say to all of you Pharisees, I say to all of you Sanhedrians, unless one, each one of you now, unless each one of you is born out of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, that's what uh, Mr. Bullinger called the hendiades. Hendiades. What is a hendiades? Cindy, you remember what a hendiades is? Anybody here remember what a hendiades is? See, Brother David had to go outside, but he remembers what a hendiades is. Do you know what hendiades is? That's a figure of speech. It means two for one. One and the same. Many people say that the first time you're born of water is when, you're, when your mother's water breaks and you're brought forth. Okay? They say that. Well, maybe Jesus is talking about that second spiritual birth. The baptism the baptism where they die they are immersed to their old self and they come out brand new just like they're being born again now just like they're coming forth from their mother's womb the second time you're born again from above as you're born out of water and the spirit you cannot enter into the kingdom of God the water and the spirit well we know you're already here in the world we can look at each other and we can see that we're a, a child of Adam huh that's no problem. But are you been born but have you been born again? That's the most important thing. Have you been born born again? Now, 
Jesus said here, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay? You have two births that you need to take care of if you're going to get to heaven. I mean, you don't have to go to heaven. God's not going to make you go to heaven. Did you know that? He's not going to make you go to heaven. That's your choice. He prepared a way for you, but he's not going to force you into heaven, not going to drag you there. A person that doesn't want to be saved wouldn't be comfortable in heaven. Did you know that? You wouldn't be comfortable there. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. The first time you were born, you were born of your Adamic father. You had the infection of sin and death in you. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Ruach. Numa. Number seven. Do not marvel that I said unto you, you must be born from above. And now he's going back to Genesis 1 and 2. Genesis 1 and 2. The wind blows where it wishes, or the spirit moves or blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from and where it is going, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit of God. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said to him, Are you a master teacher? Are you a rabbi of Israel? And you don't understand these simple things that you've been supposed to be teaching these proselytes all this time. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak. We speak. Who's we talking about? We. Who's we here? Jesus first, is in first person plural. Who's we? Mm, yeah. But that's not what it's talking about here. All right. What is it? Who's the we here? Who's the we? Him and the church that he'd already pulled, uh, that he'd already called out. We. Me and the church. All right. The church and I speak. Okay. We speak that which we know. <laughs> you know what he's telling them? You know what you're talking about. That's what he's telling him. We speak that which we know and we bear that witness of that which we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. You all, you specifically, nor any of the rest of you, believe our witnesses. Uh, if, if I told you earthly things, that's what we're talking about in 1 Corinthians now, the dirt and the heaven, the difference between dirt and heaven. If I told you earthly things that you do not believe, how shall I, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Now, what were some of the earthly things that he taught them? What were some of the earthly things he taught them? Using real natural forces on earth, what, how did he teach them? Huh? He used the example of a seed. Well, he had taught them out to seed, the sowing, and all that stuff. But how, what physical laws of nature had he literally changed? Making, Making the blind see. Water into wine. Turning water into wine. These are all natural physical things, aren't they? Weren't they physical? There's laws of nature now. What else did he do? He raised the thonatos, the dead, the necros. He raised those that were dead. What else did he do? He healed the lame. Now, when you were lame, you were lame. When you were blind, you were blind. When you were a leper, you were a leper. They say the only thing that could cure leprosy was God, something divine. Did he show them the physical? Did he come down and, and play in the dirt with them and say, Looky here, fellas. This is a little dirt bag over here that has had leprosy. Now I'm going to fix him and reform him and make his skin just like new. See what I did? Real simple object lessons. This little fellow over here, this little dirt bag over here, he's blind. But I'm going to fix his eyes and see because I'm the God of heaven. And this guy over here is dead. And I'm going to raise up that little dirt bag and I'm going to make him live again. Did he do all of this? Did they learn? They would not learn. They wish not to learn. All right. <clears throat> I told you earthly things you do not believe. 
How so you believe if I tell you heavenly things? He said, there's not one spiritual thing that I can tell you until you believe the physical. The physical miracles. Who were miracles for? Why did Jesus perform miracles? For unbelievers. For unbelievers. Not for the believers, for unbelievers. For those that did not believe. And no one has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from down from heaven, even the Son of Man. Now he's telling him where he came from. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. What happened in the wilderness? They were diseased. They were sick. They were dying of uh, the prick of a poisonous snake. The fang of the poisonous snake. And he said, those people that were bit by the snake, it, had a, it was a burning, terrible burning sensation when they, the snake would bite them. Like a, how many of you have been stung by a bee or a wasp? A wasp, this burns like fire. Has any of you ever been stung by one of them? Okay. This toxic poison that this viper that struck them, this Nahash, it was a very painful bite. It wasn't that they didn't know they were bitten. They knew when they were bitten. You know what? God can't save you until you know you've been bitten. God can't save you until you know you're lost. Okay? And if Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, go back there, Nicodemus. Remember the stories you tell the proselytes. In the wilderness, they were bitten. And what saved their lives? It wasn't some compound. It wasn't some mad stone or anything else. What was it? Look to the serpent on the pole, on the staff. That's all it took. Believe. That whoever believes, and if Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whosoever believes may in him have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to whosoever, this is each and every one now, believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. All right, we can go on all the rest of the way down there in red, but we're not going to do it. I think we got the, we got the hint, didn't we? What he's trying to tell Nicodemus. <clears throat> and that's exactly the story that he's saying here. So many ways... Paul taught what Jesus taught. And Paul is teaching what Jesus taught. In the book of Romans, in the book of Galatians, he does the same thing over and over and over again. The first human, out of the same elements as the dirt or dust. Fine dirt or fine dust. Koikos. Say koikos. Koikos. All right. The second mankind, out of heaven. Where did Jesus say he came from? Out of heaven. Out of heaven. 1548 now. Hoyos. Ho. Koikos. Toyu toy. Kai. Hoy. Boy, David, you're getting really good. You, know, you can read this as well as I do. You're doing great. Koi koi. Kai. Hoyos, Ho, Apanois, Hanois, Toy or Toy, Kai, Hoy, Uparanioi. All right. Such the one earthly. Such the one earthly. That's a little relative pronoun, that little thing to begin with. There's such a one. Such a one, the one earthly. That see that hole there? That's nominative singular masculine, definite article. Whole heristico and our throne, the definite article. And then the dirt, the ashes, turned to dust. Nominative singular masculine. Such ones. Nominative plural masculine. Such ones also the ones earthly. Okay? We're first, we're dirt. Okay? When we're born the first time, we're dirt. And such one, the man, the one heavenly. 
such a fellow also the heavenly. Penny, are, Penny, have you got your Bible open up there? Can you come up here and read the last couple of verses? 46, 47, and 48. 6, 47, 48. <clears throat> but it is not the physical life which came first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was out of the earth, made of earth, uh, dust, earthly minded. The second man is the Lord from out of heaven. Now those who are made of dust are like him who was first made of the dust, earthly minded. And as is the man from heaven, also so are those who are earthly, are uh, heavenly minded. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Hiding my book from me. Hiding my book from myself. <coughs> The word uh, koikos this means it really literally means to dig out and pour fine dust, or to pound something up, or how many of you ever played with ashes? You know that's the kind of fine dust that we're talking about here. Fine dust, fine dust. And such a one, the man heavenly, such a fellow also the ones heavenly. That word comes from Upa Uranois. Uranos, Uranos is heaven. U Epi on the front of it, what does that mean? Epi, page 153 and 4, if you look it up in your analytical Greek lexicon. That means a pawn. How would you say this in Hebrew, uh, you Hebrew scholars? Ha Hashemayim. Hashemayim. All right. That, where is that? That is the boat of God. When you are born again, when you're born the first time, you're born with the spirit of sin in you and the nature of sin. Now you're always plagued with that sin nature even after you're saved, aren't you? Are you plagued with it? I am. <laughs> We're all plagued with sin nature even after we've been saved. But before we are saved, we don't have any boxing gloves. We don't have any way to wrestle with it. After we're saved, we just go along with it when we're lost. That's just a natural thing to do. Act like, look like a dog, act like a dog. You know, Look like a hog, act like a hog. You just waller and think you're just doing fine. But after you're saved, wallering isn't quite as much fun as it used to be. It's not going to be fun. Genesis 1 and 26, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, and 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7, Ephesians 2, 6, and 20. We are by nature victims of the wrath of God, aren't we? Victims of the wrath of God. 1549. Kai, Kathos, Ephorasamen. Tain, Icona, Tu, Koiku, Foresomen, Kai, Tain, Icona, Tu, Uparaniu. Just as we have been born, or we have born the image, the icon, the image. That's an icon. Icon. Pressed out image. How do you remember the very first printing press? They said they, they attributed the first printing press to Gutenberg, didn't they? Had somebody printed used the printing press before that time? The Chinese had about a thousand years before. The Egyptians had. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people had a printing press, but those are the ones, the first ones that ever used it for mass production of books, okay? But a printing press, another form of printing press was uh, used in Palestine or Canaan. What kind of a printing press was that called? That's when they took gold or silver, they weighed it out, and they put it on a 
a configured carved image or relief piece of metal or even hard wood and they took another one and they put on top of it and they hit it and that's what you call striking a coin with an image on it and the image was usually an image of some ruler or whatever that's an icon an image all right just as we have borne the coinage the icon of the earthly we all look like atoms don't we little atoms hmm? we're all walking around looking like Adam we shall bear first person future, future indicative active we shall bear that comes from Pharaoh see we shall bear also the image the icon of the heavenly of the one heavenly one of these days we're going to have a body like Jesus a body like Jesus that is not susceptible to corruption or disease or sin I just is I'm gonna be really happy about that 1550 my mystery the mysterion of the Anastasia Tuto, Tuto. Day Fema Adelphoi Hot Hoti, Sarx, Kai, Haima, Basilia, Theu, Clerono Mesai, U, Dinate, Ude, He, Pathora, Tain, Afatharision, Clerono We start out with a weak adversity conjunctive particle on page 85 in your little analytical Greek lexicon. That's that word day there. Okay? You write that down if you want to. I ought to do it myself. <coughs> weak adversity conjunctive particle. But this I say, brothers. Adelphoi. Look at that word brothers there. Now what does that mean? We're from the same womb. We all have the same last name. See? That flesh, Sarks, and Hyma. That flesh and blood, kingdom, Basileon. The Basileon, the kingdom belonging to God. Look at that word Theo. That's genitive, singular, masculine. That's the case of possession. He owns it. He, he, he owns the kingdom of God. To inherit. Clero no by rightful lot, that means lot law, is what it literally means, lot law. By rightful lot. Not is able, neither. Now what do we just read in John the third chapter? That what? Unless you're born again, you can't even understand the kingdom of God. Isn't that what he's all told old Nicodemus? You can't understand it, you can't have any part with it. Unless you're born again. Is not able, you are not strong enough to inherit neither the corruption, the non corruption it inherits. How in the world does corruption inherit non corruption? I wrote down here because of the corrupt corruption of the body, blood is now needed to cleanse, purify, and rejuvenate the body that is constantly dying. The blood is what does that. When your heart quits beating, you're in trouble. Your body quits rejuvenating itself. What cleanses the world? Same, uh, it is of the same structure. What cleanses the world? Water. Huh? Water. Well, yeah, but what kind of water? Cindy? Okay. The seawater, which is closely related to our blood. Is it not? What kind of water is it? Salt water. What's your blood? Salt water. <laughs> Except it's red, isn't it? And that ocean cleanses the atmosphere, and it cleanses the earth, and it keeps it alive. What's going to happen in the book of Revelation when the whole world just talk about mass pollution? When the God just gels up the ocean with pollution, and it quits cleansing and it becomes a cesspool. All right. 
flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor is it able corruption to uncorruption to inherit blood is necessary that word clero nome in uh, ancient times they believed that they could shake a lot out and the lot they believed that God would make that lot to fall on the person that was guilty or not guilty that's how they did things chose by lots 1551 Edu Misterion Amen Lego Pontes U Koi Me Te Sometha Pontes De Allah Ge Sometha Behold a secret to you I say Behold a secret to you, I say, that mystery. We, our word mystery comes right out. It means a secret. To you all, the whole church, I say, first person singular, present indicative active. All. Not we shall fall asleep. Koimao. Not all we shall fall asleep. Koimao. The cemetery is full of sleepy bodies. That word cemetery basically comes from this word. Koima. Koima. Cemetery. All right. We shall not all fall asleep and be in necropolises. Cemeteries. We could verse the conjunctive particle, page 85, but all we shall be changed. Both the living and the dead shall be changed so they can receive the resurrection body in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 16. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 16 quickly. 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 16. Uh, Michelle, can you read that for me up here? 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 16. 13 through 18. Get this one out here. Four, thirteen through 18. Now also we would not have you ignorant, brethren, about those who fall asleep in death, that you may not grieve for them, as the rest do we have not no hope beyond the grave. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will also bring with him through Jesus those who have fallen asleep in death. For this we declare to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons, with the shout of an archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. Then we, the still living who remain on the earth, shall simultaneously be caught up along with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so always, through the eternity of the eternities, we shall be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort and courage one another with these words. Thank you. That just goes right along with it, doesn't it? How much better? Who was the writer of 1 Thessalonians? The same author. Start just writing about the same subject, isn't he? All right? The same subject. We shall all be changed. Behold a mystery I say to you. All not shall fall asleep. All of you shall not die. But 
all of those that are alive shall be changed too. We're going to be changed in the middle of the air. Brother, or Dr. Carl Farrar used to say to me, one of my teachers, he said, Brother Jim, he said, I think the reason why God raises the dead first is so that the living can see the glory of the resurrection just in a flash. Just a flash. They will see the glory of the resurrection and just say, wow. And about the time they're saying, wow, they're going to be changed. And we're going to find out how fast it's going to happen now. Okay? How fast that's going to happen. Well, these days. In Atomo. In Ripe, Ophthalmu, En Te Escate, Sal Pige, Sal Pise, Gar, Kai, Hoi, Necroi, Eger Te Son Tai, Athar Toi, Kai, Himes, Ale Gay Somatha. In a atoma, I wasn't there, but my teachers told me that J. Lewis Guthrie, Dr. J. Lewis Guthrie was a physicist. If you want to go to discovertheword.com or study the word with drjim.com, if you go to those websites, look over there where it says the creation of the heavens and the earth or uh, Christ and creation over to the right and read about that. Dr. J. Lewis Guthrie was talking about the division and the splitting of the atom before they ever did it. He was talking about this in the 1920s and 30s. He talked about this word right here. In the uncutting, in a division of time so small that it can't be divided, what happened when they finally divided the atom? What happened? Hmm? What happened when they divided the atom for? What happened, Cindy? You're a physicist type person. You're physical science, all of that. What happened when, when they divided the atom? Something took place, huh? A powerful change of energy. Like Einstein said, mass times the speed of light squared. Something really happened. Mass became energy instantaneously. Tremendous amount of energy. In the undivision of time, a period of time that uh, cannot be split, Thayer says on page 83. In the ripe, ripe, all right, what is a ripe? What's a ripe? Well, ripe, huh? Is it a bird? Well, it means that. It means a, a, a something that flaps its wings. What kind of things flap their wings? Hmm? What kind of things flap their wings? Birds? Bees? The bees flap their wings? All right. What is a very small insect that flaps its wings? What? What? Flea? Oh, your dog is flapping its wings. Okay. How about a gnat? Has a gnat ever got in your ear? One time, at uh, 3031 Edison Highway, <laughs> where I used to own a little service station, and I even worked there when I was very young, right there on the corner of uh, Oswell and Edison, uh, Oswell and Edison. I was working there when I was about 15 or 16 years old, and underneath those bright lights at night time, and a gnat flew into my ear, and there was a B-52 bomber going through my head. Like that all the time. That word ripe, they means one flap of a gnat's wing. One flap of a gnat's wing. That's literally what it means. A single stroke of a gnat's wing. Okay? And then ophthalmu. All right? Now he's bringing this flap of the gnat's wing. How fast can you blink your eyes? Huh? Just blink your eyes. How fast can you blink your eyes? All right? It's faster than that. A flap, one flap of a gnat's wing 
That's how fast this is going to happen. Instantaneously. In an undivisible period of time, in one flap of a gnat's wing, page 563 on Thayer, by the way, uh, the sparkle of an eye, the sparkle, the twinkle, the sparkle of an eye. How have you ever seen someone's eye sparkle? Have you? It, how fast does it sparkle? It just flashes, doesn't it? I'm having all kinds of flashes in this right eye here tonight, just all over the place. Boy, lightning is everywhere. <clears throat> You're not seeing that lightning I'm seeing, I know. Oh. Just zip, 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 zip. <clears throat> the sparkle of an eye. It also means the vibration of a harp string or a guitar string. Have it, many, how many of you have a guitar or a violin instrument? Something like that. One single vibration of a guitar string. Of a harp string. One single vibration of a violin string. In the last, Saul Piggy, Saul Piggy, that is the sound of a trumpet. It sounds, for it sounds, the ones dead, the, remember the necropolis? All the necropolis is going to be evacuated. The necroi, the dead ones. They shall be raised up, Igadre. A guy is the root of that word. Third person to future indicative passive. They shall be raised up. It's future tense. Future tense. It's indicative mode, which means what? It's an absolute fact, but it's passive voice. What does passive voice mean? It's going to be, they're not going to raise themselves. Jesus raised himself from the dead. Did you know that? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. But literally it says he raised himself from the dead. We're not going to raise ourselves from the dead. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to raise us from the dead. And he's going to do it at the sound of a trumpet. The ones uh, incorruptible. That's us. That's us. That's it. We're the incorruptible ones. And we shall be changed. We shall be transformed. First person plural. Future indicative past. That word incorruptible means immune from decay. Once you've been born again, how do you get born again? Huh? How do you get born again? How does that happen? What happens? Hmm? The Holy Spirit convicts your soul of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. It's going to tell us that in just a few minutes. We're getting ahead of ourselves here, but... We're, we're talking about volition and we're talking about uh, uh, subjunctive mode. It may or may not happen to people, people, okay? And remember, I told you about that girl calling me on the phone here a while back that had gone to church all of her life and she had realized she had listened to me preach one time and she realized that she was lost. She had never come to the point in her life where she had made a conscience repentance and asked the Lord to save her soul. That has to happen, people. You're not going to get to heaven otherwise. Okay? That's not going to happen otherwise. You must be born again. You must be born from above. You're born the first time, you've got to be born again to get to heaven. All right? The Holy Spirit has to convict you of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. And then what do you do? You say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm repenting. And save my soul for what because it's what Jesus did. He died for my sins and was raised in the resurrection for my right. Then I become dikaiosune. I become righteous in his sight. 1553. Day. Gar. To. Fatharton. Tuto. In de sa ste. Athar. Sion. Kai. To. Thane tone Tuto in the Saste Athanasion
for it is bindingly necessary. The corruptible, this, this corruptible, what is he talking about? This body. Paul had a, uh, a body that wasn't worthy in the going into heaven. That body had to be changed. Cell by cell. Had to be changed. God changes every cell in our body to get us into heaven. Did you know that? And that repay, in that twinkle, sparkle of an eye, in that automa, that undivisible point of time, he's going to change our bodies. Amen? He's going to change our bodies. And the corruptible this shall bind on, shall dress up in, and it, it, what is it in Hebrew? We will be wrapped up in. Wrapped up in the incorruptible. Incorruption. And the uh, mortal, that which is subject to death, this, to dress up in immortality in the undying now this word uh, immortality there is only used two times in the New Testament no not immortality but to, to bind on and to dress up again is used two times in the New Testament here and in 1 Timothy 6.16 immortality binding up Binding up in immortality. Binding up, dressing up in immortality. 1554. Hotan, day, to, fatarton, tuto, in de sete, afatharsion, kai, to, the, thane, tone, tuto, in de sa, in de sete, Athanasion Tot Genesete Ho Logos Ho Gegra Menos Kati Pothe Ho Thanatos Ace Nikos This is a, a little conjunction relating to time here, this Hotan. Whenever, relating to time, and whenever the corruptible, this one, he may bind on or dress up in incorruption, and the mortality, that which is subject to death, this one he shall dress up in corruption, in corruption. Third person singing there, first air is subjunctive and middle voice. How shall he do it for himself? Now we're just talking about God changes. Now how in the world do we dress up in this for ourselves? It is third person singular, first air, subjunctive, middle voice. How do you do that? That's volition. When God calls you to salvation, you either do what? One or two things. You either reject or accept God's call. You either reject or you accept. So that's what's the difference between going to death, lost, and being generated, raised, double dead, and getting changed and binding on the mortality into immortality. 1555, and that's where we'll finish tonight, 1555. Who? Su, thonate, to, nikos, pu, su, thonate, to, ketron. All right. Now here the Apostle Paul is quoting Hosea 13 and verse 14. Does anyone have Hosea 13 and verse 14? Because he only uses part of the verse. Just part of it. He's using it by inspiration for a very important thing. Hosea. 13 and verse 14. Anybody come up here and read that for me. Hosea 13 and verse 14. The whole shooting match. Okay. Paul is using it and he's changing it. He's changing it to suit his term right here. Cindy, do you have that? Do you want to come up here and read that? <coughs> <coughs> Hosea 13 and verse 14.
Should I ransom them from the power of Sheol, the place of death? Should I redeem them from death? O death, where are your plagues? O Sheol, where is your destruction? Relenting and compassion are hidden from my eyes. All right. Sheol. Now, is that the Amplified? Yes. Okay, that's good because that's exactly what the Hebrew says. All right. Paul's talking about that. Where you death? Where are you death? The victory. Where is the victory of death? And where is the the sting of death? What he's talking about here is the sting of Sheol. Where is the pains of hell? In 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 Greek it's uh Hade, which is Hades. Alright, but Paul's talking about Sheol here. He's he's not quoting the Septuagint, he's quoting the you know, you can tell when you're when they're writing what they're doing here. He's not quoting the Septuagint. He's quoting the Hebrew scriptures. Death, where is the sting? Thanate, death. We are not subject to the pains of hell if you've been born again. Did you know that? We won't ever suffer in hell. Amen? <laughs> that ought to make you happy. We'll never suffer one torment in hell. You will never be thirsty in hell. The people in hell will be. You'll never be thirsty like those in hell. You will never be uh, un in flames of fire. You'll never be hot. You'll never be definitely cold. You'll never be sorry for what you did. Those in hell will be repenting forever, but it will be too late. Oh, I wish I had done that Oh, I wish. Remember, we have one very good example of that in, in the book of Luke, isn't it? Luke, the 16th chapter. Isn't that where we have Lazarus and uh, uh, Nineveh? The real historical account of two people that went to Sheol. One of them was suffering in the torment side of the place of the damned, and the other one was in paradise. The one in paradise was having a good time. Aha, ye, this is great. And boy, did his life change. Out from living um, uh, and having the dogs lick his wounds and living off of scraps from the rich man's table. And now the rich man is wanting something from him. Let him dip his finger in water and, and, and cool my parched tongue and lips. Let someone go back and tell my brothers about this place. So, Because they won't come here if one went back from the dead. But one did go back from the dead, didn't we? Today we are constantly threatened by the sting of death. Brother Hubbard said, As a prancing scorpion, scorpion waving its death-dealing stinger as a flag, someday we shall wave eternal life as a flag to the glory of God. Brother Hubbard wrote that a long time ago, my Greek and Hebrew teacher. Death has lost its fangs. The serpent of death has lost his poisonous sacks and fangs. They've been removed. They've been removed by the power of God. Revelation 19 and 10, Acts 26 and 14. The sting of the scorpions and the locusts in the book of Revelation. Acts 26, the sting of a viper, of a snake. Nothing will have death-dealing qualities over there on the other side. Well, we want tonight from 15, uh, 1546, uh, 46 to 55. Do you have a question? Do you have any questions? What? Well, personally, I I wouldn't be cremated, but uh, many cultures have practiced cremation for a long, long time. We know that that uh, they practice it in Israel. Saul and, and the boys, you know what happened to them? Didn't they cremate them afterwards? Take their ashes, what was left of them. Uh, 
But they were beheaded too, weren't they? They were dismembered. Uh, economically today, cremation is a much cheaper form of burial than anything else right now. And a lot of people do that. I I've heard people say that I'm going to be cremated so God can't find me. <laughs> That's not going to bother him one bit. Remember that word, koiko, a while ago? That's dust like ashes, you know? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, all this kind of business, you know? You're not going to hide from God. You can't do that. You can't hide from God. It's impossible. You're not going to hide your... Talk about DNA. God knows our DNA structure, and he is going to resurrect it cell by cell and stand again, either to go into eternal flames of fire or to go with him. There's going to be a resurrection of both of them. They're going to be a far time apart, but it's, it's both going to happen. All right? Answer your question. I mean, I don't care what you do with your body. There are people out there buried at sea. What do you think of those poor people that are buried at sea? They become fish poop. That's it. Their bones are still there. The salt water is also Yeah. But what, is God going to have any trouble getting that together? He'll know exactly where that DNA is. Whatever form it went through in the meanwhile. It, it doesn't matter to God. It's that you can't hide it. No matter what happened to you. There are people over there in World War II. I, I was reading Audie Murphy's To Hell and Back. One of his friends, one of the first people that he knew, his body was vaporized. Poof, a shell hit him and just went poof, and burned him up. There was nothing to put together. There was no, nothing to carry. I don't even know where they found his dog tags. That happens. You probably had that over in Vietnam, didn't you, Brother Roger? Sometimes people got zapped. They're gone. Nothing to pick up. But God will find it. He'll find it real easy. Uh, any other questions? Cindy, you got any questions? No? Michelle? No? Penny? Pam? Dave? Corey? All right. Brother Roger. Would you like to be the victim to come up here and, and, and dismiss us in prayer? I told you not to. <laughs> Don't make eye contact with <laughs> Father, thank you for bringing us here once again to have an opportunity to hear your word, have it explained. Please guide us and direct us in your will and way and apply what we have learned through the out the coming week. Please be with the concerns that each one of us have individually. Thank you for all you've done for us. Amen. Amen. Please pray for me tomorrow about this time I'll be recovering, I hope, from eye surgery. Hopefully. One, one leg of it anyway.